welcome everyone into another episode of Raising Star Seeds. We're so fortunate to have Z Earth Star with us today. And really, I, I, I feel it's, it's almost um, not fair to, to like label you in, into, into one thing. Um, you know, your, your passion, your mission for the past year has been, I know, working on curriculum. And we're really excited to get into that. But you're a multidimensional healer. You are a grid worker. And I mean, Z really embodies the walking the talk. <laughs> she ebbs and flows. So thank you so much. We're so excited for you to come in and impart your wisdom for the parents and the children. So thank you. I, I am so excited to be here. You ladies are my favorites and these kids are my favorites. And so I'm just super stoked to have a chat today. Yeah. You know, Z, you and I, we were, we were messaging earlier and uh, you had mentioned these, these kids are, are taking over, <laughs> taking over everything in your life. And, you know, I think Heidi and I were, were pulled the same way and it's just this big, it's time, <laughs> it's, it's time to, to address it and to do something with that. So how, how are they showing up in your life right now, these Starseed children? Okay, so this period of time really started um, on the equinox of this year. So like the end of March, there was like this ancient crystal skull that just ended up at my house at the equinox is the uh, Mitchell Hedges skull. And people say that it's like an ancient Atlantean skull, but I actually felt like it was an Arcturian light technology. But anyway, when the skull was here at that time, um, <laughs> so I, I had a private session where the keeper of the skull like sat we sat next to each other and he was looking at me and he's channeling the skull and he looks at me he's like you're going to have a little starcy child <laughs> and I was like what and he's like he goes there's hundreds of them <laughs> flying around your head I'm like I'm not gonna have hundreds of star children no 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 <laughs> you're not gonna give birth to all of them but you know you have a special contract to support these kids into entering the planet and I had actually already felt that way um, here at the Earth Star Sanctuary, building a birthing center was kind of like a really big part of what we were doing. Some of you know that I um, gave birth to a really magical baby back in 2020, and she only stayed with me nine days. And the whole entire period where I was pregnant with her was like a classic, you know, I was channeling her all the time. We had a full on telepathic communication online and she was teaching me about you know birthing stargates and these avatar children that are coming in and how advanced they are i mean they're really like true ascended masters in a lot of ways and she was teaching me i mean she coached me through my whole pregnancy about releasing trauma from my cervix to have you know pleasurable birthing experience because you know the birthing portal it's kind of an entryway into the world and so is this whole complex mystery school teachings about the light body of women and how you know the pain and the numbness that sometimes is common in the birthing um, in our society is actually a part of this dark magic which perpetuates suffering and this hell realm in this world because the women are literally birthing uh, human beings into a reality of pain through being miseducated basically. And so that was really intense. And of course, she then pulled me through the death initiation when she left. She was like, yeah, I just needed to anchor the Stargate. And she told me she was going to be back. But, you know, as my human self went through that grieving and throwing my middle finger at God, you know, just being like, how could you do this to me? You know, I've always listened to what you asked. And now you take away my baby. You know, I really had to go through that angst. But through that process as well, she pulled my consciousness into these other realms. And I think what ended up happening was this portal was able to open from the source field where she came from. Um, so the word Kara ended up meaning Kara, which are the first syllables of creation. And so really she came from the source of creation through this Stargate. And so when she passed back up into that realm, she opened up this field so that more avatar children can be born in this protective field. So that's really kind of what we were able to accomplish through that whole experience. And I haven't told anybody this in the community, but I'm pregnant again. And I'm, this is, I guess this is a pregnancy announcement now. <laughs> I know Shane's gonna be so mad at me because <laughs> we've kind of been like you know because I've been nervous like I didn't know like you know I was still having some PTSD over like the loss and everything but recently um, 
Kara's like, you need to be making vlogs. You need to tell people that I'm here. You need to document your entire pregnancy because people need to like understand how this relationship can be. And just last week, you know, she's like hammering me. Like, you need to like, I, I want to be on camera. Like I want to be <laughs> seen. And I'm like, I don't want to tell everybody that I'm pregnant. So we're like, this is, and then, you know, of course the show came up and I was like, okay, <laughs> everything is kind of aligning for that to happen. And so, yeah, after the skull left, about four days after I met my um, current beloved and <laughs> things happened really fast because, you know, I think three months from then I basically got pregnant. I think he came to visit me like in the end of June and then I got pregnant within like three weeks because she was like standing by, you know what I mean? She's like <laughs> waiting for the <laughs> portal to open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, all right, I got an opportunity. I'm going in. If it was up to me, I would have waited a few more years. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, these kids, like they're, because <laughs> yeah, I practice these um, Taoist uh, feminine sexual practices that give me sovereignty over my womb. And so I, I would do these breathing exercises. I would communicate with my womb. And so the first time she came in, I was doing all of that. She actually had to show up in her light body and tell me to stop doing the practices because she needed to come in. And so for whatever reason, you know, this time I wasn't really doing those practices as much. And she definitely just popped right in. And so over the last, um, I guess, month or two, um, they've really been just showing up and they're showing me like kind of the, the energetic environment that they need and also just like all of the interdimensional stuff that happens and that are trying to get them. You know, we've even, you know, I feel like star seeds our age, like we've really gone through the brunt of this where our parents didn't have any idea that there were interdimensional demons and portals and they were all trying to steal our DNA and there's grace trying to abduct us and all this stuff. <laughs> so like we just had to kind of get really hard headed and aura <laughs> and make it through all that. And I think for that reason, you know, it is harder for us to access some of these dormant strands of our DNA that gives us, you know, certain levels of our superpowers. And these kids, you know, they're really going to be the ones that leads humanity into the golden age. We're really preparing the field for them to come in. And so the better that we can create that environment and provide that platform and that protection and understand like, you know, these kids aren't just coming in to play with crystals and whatever, like these kids are coming in to embody 12D avatar consciousness and beyond. You know, when we say kids are coming in from the source field, like what does that look like? Being Gs, things like G, you know, and I feel like many of the parents, we have the genetic template to access those levels of our embodiment as well. Because, you know, we think about, I've been loving using this example of Jesus lately because everybody knows Jesus and the story of Jesus. But on a scientific level and on a genetic level, Jesus was someone that held a 12D DNA template that was able to fully activate his DNA template. And of course, he had a lot of help. You know, he was born into a temple. So from the time he was young, you know, his mom, who was, you know, tuned into the mystery lineages of miraculous conception. And in fact, you know, his mother was also conceived by miraculous conception by her mother. And so being born into lineages like that meant that from the time you're born, your parents are activated and initiated into ancient mystery school practices to a point where they can begin to. Um, I know that the word groom is kind of used funny, but, you know, it is a way of just supporting a soul in their soul's mission from the time they're born. And this is like an kind of an extreme, right? I feel like sometimes in our life, even for uh, us adults, it's hard to get extreme because, you know, we're like, what's my mom going to think? What's society going to think? You know, do I really want to go all out with our spirituality? Because there's just like levels to how much devotion and how much um, all, how all in we are in our ascension process. Because I know that, you know, all starseeds, you know, we have had ancient mystery temple teachings, not just on this planet, but in many other ascended civilizations. And so, you know, it's almost this threshold that we have to cross where it's like, okay, we're still 
um, inside of the realm of normal and we're still dabbling inside the realm of normal. And now we're like, okay, these avatar kids are coming in and they're going to perform miracles. And so like, where's the bridge? How, where's the middle? How much effort do, do we have to put in to provide the right environment for them to really, you know, cause at this point, I think we can all agree that we could use a couple miracles. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. We I need mean, a few miracles and then we need that heart centered support of watching these systems collapse. I yeah, think absolutely. watching our brothers and sisters panic and go fear based as these things go. And here I am like, yay, let it fall. And they're like, I thought you're like this spiritual. <laughs> I'm like, it's a good thing though. These old systems have to fall because we have to build the new ones. No, absolutely. It's having the trust in ourselves that we have the creative power to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and, and what you're talking about was the, in regards to, you know, what is, what kind of role do we as parents play for these children? Um, I can only speak to the role that I feel that I've been playing with, with my children is that, you know, they, they were a large part of my own awakening and, and really my own embracing of, of who I am. And so really the role I see for them is, you know, number one is to, is to provide them with a, a safe, loving environment um, that's completely unrestricted. There's no ownership. I don't own them. I'm, mm. I, it's very odd. You know, I, I've never felt that even from birth. I've never felt that they belong to me. It, it is, it's a hard thing because you know a lot of us are conditioned in that birthing process of like once you see their baby like oh my goodness like they're like everything and and i just didn't feel that i just felt these are very strong individual people individual souls and it's my role to provide shelter and warmth and love for them um but never to be a hindrance of what they came here to do and you know so what all, all i do in my home and i love the fact that you know they're not just here to like play with crystals <laughs> Because that's kind of like what I enjoy doing <laughs> now is, you know, but as I'm learning and growing, they're learning and growing. And, and it's really, it's just giving them access to information. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. just like, as Heidi and I, we've talked a lot. And like you said, like we're building the foundation and then they can just run with it. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing, um, you know, and I've spoke about this on social media, my middle child is he just is really so drawn to fly and you know a protective nature is you know i'm worried about them going out and running by themselves or get kidnapped but <laughs> i have no problem dumping him off with with this 25 year old flight instructor and letting him fly a plane for two hours <laughs> but the only like i know that's his sole mission that's in his life path and i can't hold him back from that and just trust in knowing this that when they're living what they're supposed to be here doing, that they're going to be protected, that it's all part of their path. So, you know, I guess just for me, my thing is, I just gotta like step back and let them go and just and just say, hey, what, what do you need? How can I help you? All right, just go. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're really speaking to this um, angle of perceiving parenthood. I know like just from my parents, they really perceived that I was some like new thing that didn't have a soul before that they could sculpt into like a doctor if they wanted to, you know, because that's what they perceived as being good. But really we're entering into like this perspective of being a guardian for a soul. Mm -hmm. And there's like just such an honor in that, um, in that role of recognizing that, you know, you are basically signing up to be the protector and the guardian of the soul crossing from a very high realm into this realm and knowing that they're here to you know do such a sacred and holy task of being this gift of this spark from god as this spark of god's love to love this world and this is such a sacred task that when we approach it with that reverence you know we could have nothing but because you know Kara showed up as this full-grown man the second time that she came to visit me just to show me she was like this Mayan shaman I could tell that she had like mastered the elements you know she was teaching me things and she was just showing me she's like look don't get it twisted I'm a I'm this full-grown master being don't you worry don't get it twisted you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know but it, it but it's difficult um when and it'll be interesting to see if Kara experiences the same kind of frustrations because they do have this inner knowingness of being what they have been, you know, and then they're like, 
<laughs> this is always a trigger moment for my son. When we go out to a restaurant, if they give him like a sippy cup, like a kid's cup. <laughs> And this, ha this, this literally <laughs> happened like six months ago and I could just read them. And I said, one of these times you're just going to say, do you realize I'm a commander? I'm a commander <laughs> of a crowd. I'm like, and you just gave me a sippy cup. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> just that feeling. I'm like, do you even know what I am capable of? <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. It's so funny. It's, yeah. it's so funny. My kid, my kids coming in were definitely my teachers and kind of my big whack across the face of you haven't been getting your whole life here's your here's some more lesson <laughs> but then i fell in this role of the protection i'm like that's my job especially with this 20 month blip we're going through and then when they became a little bit of age like five six my youngest i'm like wait a second i went to university to be an early childhood educator i stepped out of it when big pharma reared its head i was like what am i gonna and i was a working single mom so i'm like education there's no choice where are my choices and i fell into the waldorf way of doing things i kind of like that system and steiner is super connected i think to source um but they were really limited and then cut to 10 years later i'm looking around and we're in la like a hub where people are like get out of there and i'm like there's forest schools everywhere there's pods everywhere it's just a mass awakening of its own happening here. And I couldn't be more thrilled that we're offering more choices nowadays for these people. Like people such as us going, nope, I don't like what you're offering. I'm going to do it myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we are. And I think now it's time to get all our little star scene bambinos and what's to come. It's mm -hmm. time for them to find each other. And, yeah. uh, you know. I really want to just honor you for a second, Heidi, because I, I just want to say that I'm per perceiving that you are basically in a higher frequency reality because a lot of people are not experiencing what you're you're experiencing right in LA a lot of people yeah. are just seeing you know the the tyranny and all that stuff and this is something that's really important right now is that you know many people may not know that there are actually etheric mind control technologies that are just blasting this doom and gloom energy and they want people to be like oh no the government's doing this and they're trying to create this timeline and yeah they're trying to get you to subscribe to this timeline where they can succeed in taking over humanity it's actually like not on the table it's just not allowed right and so the way like the reason why we're all down here is to actually anchor god's timeline which is clearly the one that, you know, Heidi is experiencing, which is that there is, you know, people choosing the forest schools and choosing the pause. And this is just something that, you know, it's, it's almost like there's a, it feels like there's a timeline conjunction, right? With all the mandates and all the stuff, it's pushing the light workers to make a decision, right? Yes, like if you're it. here to create something, what are you creating and what are you choosing to give your energy to every single day? And fear is a way that we give energy to creation. And also excitement is another way. And so if you're just, you know, head first, and I'm like this, I know that from the way that you guys are experiencing and just expressing yourself, you're just, you know, excited and creating the new. And if all of us are just in that vibration, of just so excitedly creating the new, then, you know, there's actually zero chance. Like that's really what our template is here to do. So thank you so much for just reflecting yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. I've never felt more now than ever of being outside and just being in two separate worlds from others, <laughs> but it doesn't affect me. Like I'm not feel, I, if I start to feel that pull on me or that loose pull, I have my tool belt. I have my old Pleiades gateway. <laughs> it really helped me a lot. I, like I, there's, we've built this community that we have the support to not get pulled down in it again, you know, and recognize the symptoms we are. And at the same time, keep lightening up, keep waking someone up, keep spreading the light. I think it's just like, it's the most beautiful awakening ever and the gnarliest at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> the you safe know, place for the kids, yeah, is everything. I, I just want to, um, you know, as, cause we're, we're talking about these timelines, um, you know, one thing that, that really kind of pulled me into this direction was I was in some of my readings dipping into the children and, and what I was experiencing in some of these starseed parents, children was they were showing me that they had been here for prior a couple lives. And essentially they were here feeling out what the earth needed. What is Gaia needed? Where am I needing to heal? And then they went 
and did a couple of lifetimes off planet gathering in the knowledge that they were going to need and now they've chosen to come back here all of that knowledge is encoded inside of them and they're just waiting for the proper stage and it is just going to just boom it's just going to turn on so I mean, if you really look at it, it's it's a brilliant template of how to, this has been arranged. And like, we're gonna go there first. We did the recon work, <laughs> did a couple lifetimes, felt out what, where it's lacking, where can I be drawn towards the help? I'm gonna go gather my tools. I'm going to learn and, and, and be where I need to be and then come back. And I'm gonna have all of it imprinted in me because the frequency is gonna be raising up higher and I'm going to be able to heal. So it is like, and again, like the joke of they're, they're, not, they're not here to play with crystals. They're here to do work, like work. It's, it's going to be work, but it's gonna be great because we're gonna have really fun this. work. It's fun, fun work. It's, it's yeah. rewarding work. It's gonna feel good in the heart space. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm super connected to the genetic aspect of this because upstairs I am a geneticist in the seventh density from um, the angelic realms of Andromeda. And so it's for those skills that I was actually kind of called into the starseed missions. And so for a very long time, you know, I actually upstairs, I'm, it's kind of almost like I have a body that's the ship because, you know, ships are alive and, and beautiful yeah. up there. And, you know, sometimes like kids will recognize me. Like I had meetings with parents, you know, just like in coffee shops and then their kids just like attached to my skirt, just like upstairs. And they're like, all right, bye mom. Like I'm ready to go to school. And so <laughs> it's really cute because you're totally right. There's packets of DNA that are encoding their memories and their skills and even timelines, you know, there's holographic aspects of the DNA that unlocks during certain times when external factors are activated. Mm -hmm. And so let's say like the planetary energy reaches this, this, this state and then the child's gifts and this happens for us too, because we're really operating in the same um, genetic templates. You know, we just might be a little bit more dormant than them because they're coming in, you know, the earth is just in a different place now. Yeah. Even the, when, when I came in in the nineties is way different than, you know, the eighties and before that. And so, yeah, it's really exciting. You know, the level of consciousness and God we're going to be seeing mm -hmm. on this planet. And I think right now for us, I feel like we were really the system busters and even the first waivers, like we had to like do a lot of heavy lifting mm -hmm. in the field to like raise it even to the vibration where our kids can come in. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I feel like as we continue to do that, I feel like the, you know, you guys as kids are kind of in that in between where they're partially helping us do our work, you know, lifting up the field. And then in their 20s and 30s, you know, these higher levels of their being are going to come online and they're going to be more participating in the next wave as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing that, you know, I know that for me with Kara, it's almost like she's my, I call her that she's my ascension teacher. And it almost feels like she's like my um, sensei because, you know, she's like, all right, now we're going to go meditate, you know, and we're going to meditate, you know, here's what we're going to do when we meditate. And then she's like showing me these like techniques of bioregenesis and like pathways of my meridians. And like, these are the things that she's here to, again, master because um, when you were saying that starseeds have incarnated through time, well, you know, I feel like there's a collapse going on in that, like, Jesus was an ET, right? He was a high Syrian priest mm -hmm. and he and this whole giant starseed family, like it's the same mission, <laughs> right? He was really coming in to restore the grid or the holographic tree of pieces of consciousness that had fallen into disconnection from source. And so really we're still on that mission. In fact, you know, it's like I, I'm starting to meet certain people that incarnate during that period and even before that and also, you know, in the, um, 1200s, you know, through the Cathars and in these different places in the world where we were really trying to anchor this 12D plus Christ connection to source. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like those lifetimes were also our recon where we really didn't know how bad it was going to be, right? Until we came down here and we're like, oh, these people are literally straight up like murdering us. Like we <laughs> gotta come up with a plan here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's bad. It's like really bad. <laughs> we, we go back up to the ship. We're like, we got killed again. <laughs> These people are savages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, um, 
my oldest daughter actually has, uh, she can still tap into it. Um, she know that she, she has memories of coming down here on one of those recon missions, um, but she actually came down thinking that she could blend in. So she didn't like incarnate, she just thought she could blend in, but it was all research based. She was researching and she was writing. Yeah. And she, know, she knows that, cause she can feel it. She's in, she's in a tube in some underground base in a vat of this like goo that, you know, but obviously, you know, you push your consciousness out and her soul bounced and, and now she's in what she is right now because she realized, okay, we have to incarnate in the being to come mm. and do more work. So, yeah, I mean, ag again, it's just, they've tried all kinds of different things as to how to come down here and get this information and figure out how it's going to work, to work best mm -hmm. in order to- So here I wanna just touch on like, I feel that, yeah, like this whole birthing process is really important. And I think that specifically Kara is, is I feel like I'm like a, like an officer that's like looking for recruits or something. She's like trying to recruit the parents because um, I'm really, because there's a lot of parents that like want to bring in high vibrational kids. And it's like, you know, I know that um, there's just a spectrum of how d committed we can be. And I know that, you know, they keep telling me that in the next 20 years, there's going to be thousands of kids born to miracle conception, just like, you know, back in that time, because that's just the level of avatars that we need on the planet. You know what I'm saying? Like if there was no Jesus, like we wouldn't, we wouldn't have these stories of miracles and healing and God's love being such an integrated part of culture, mm -hmm. which was a really big ripple. I mean, that mission was only partially successful because if it was completely successful, obviously we'd all be like connected to God or whatever. But, <laughs> you know, this whole idea that, you know, integrated um, virtues like divine love and miracle healing and the presence of holiness and these kind of more um, regal and sacred parts of the temple that are being reinstated. I mean, there was a huge war in the wiping out of these energies, which are supposed to be natural to humans, right? It's not even that these energies were only supposed to exist in sex or temples, is that this is supposed to be the energy that is the earth is that the whole earth is in this sacred temple holy vibration and because there was this war we had to hide in these temples so that we didn't get killed or whatever but at this point you know these teachings are coming back and Kara specifically is recruiting parents that are willing to go like the extra 500 miles <laughs> of really committing to a path of of mastery right and this is like where it's like we can dabble or and I feel like a lot of people are just um, scattered in the world because they're meant to be these lights. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there are people out there that know that there is like a deep, profound level of mystery templehood in their being. But because of that, they've been killed and wiped out. They're scared to commit fully to the representation of that again. Mm -hmm. And these kids are really like, look, you don't have to go out there and yell that you're a temple initiate or anything like that. But we need you to embody a certain vibration so we can come through the gateway because these these high level avatar beings they can't come in unless we can create space for them and there's no hurry you know it's just that the sooner they can come in you know the sooner we can be done with this whole thing so they're kind of like look if you guys can just put in a little more effort we're gonna do you know you guys put in the two steps we're gonna come in and get the job done we promise we're here to get the job done Okay, no. but we just need you guys to meet us, not even halfway, just a little bit. <laughs> and there's no age limit on the portals, is there? What? <laughs> says, says a cougar wife who, who every month goes, maybe? <laughs> hey, you know, I mean, you can think about it. Um, I'm pretty sure Jesus' grandmother come, um, conceived miraculously in her late 50s. Wow. Right. And so when we're thinking about these temple mysteries, like it takes, you know, at this point, it'll take a few years to train and to really access ascension consciousness. And it's like for us to be talking about ascension and the transmutation of our DNA to be able to phase shift into other dimensions and travel through stargates, like all of these things are things that we used to do when the earth was alive and in those vibrations. And all these things are the things that we are seeing in our quantum hypnosis journeys and our visions, right? Mm -hmm. We're seeing these stargates coming back in line. We're seeing us traveling through portals to different parts of the world. Like all of these things are coming back in, but it's like the, 
architecture or the light body of the planet has to be correct and healed and the only way for that to happen is for the humans to be able to interface with those levels of consciousness and so it's like in order for that those levels of consciousness to be intact they need to be intact in a guardian and so the human adults, we're learning to access those level of mystery school teachings to at least bring in these kids that have full connection with those levels of their own being. And I do feel like Kara is one of these first first beings. She's definitely, I, I see her, you never seen that episode of The Simpsons where Bart is at um, summer school and he like turns into this like child cult leader and he's like leading the rebellion <laughs> of the kids at the summer camp. It feels like Kara is like, all right, like, there she's like standing there and they're all peeking through the window and carries Kara's you know dove down and created this portal and she's like look guys we're here we're just waiting to come in to you know bring in this whole other level and we just need we just need some things we need you know we need our trust fund and <laughs> no, i'm just kidding <laughs> but anyway <laughs> your spiritual you know dowry or inheritance <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I actually had uh, uh, some clients and come in and it was, they wanted a reading for their baby. And I just, I almost just wept because to have that level of awareness, because they mm -hmm. wanted to, know what's the best environment that we can bring this child in? What does she need? And I was, so much just admiration and respect to being at that level of conscious awareness for these children. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, we've been talking to, um, about human design, how, you know, just understanding the human design of your child and, and using that as a guide. So again, just building up these tools and every little bit helps, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's creating that environment for them to come into. Absolutely. And we see how like that metaphysically is literally creating the new world, isn't it? Like when women are taking ownership and advocating for their original power of birthing, you know, that whole thing has been, I like looked up on a statistic the other day and it was like less than, or just a little over half a percent of births happen at home at this point, 99.4 of them happen in the hospital. I was just like, wow, like that's, that's a, <laughs> I didn't expect the numbers to be that extreme, but they, they really are, but it is on the rise. Yeah. yeah both, both my children were in the hospital it was the most traumatic, dramatic, it was awful and to do be able to do it again would be amazing but i have to tell you this in both instances three years apart there was some little angel that was there just for mm -hmm. me you know of right course. here <laughs> okay it's not what you were thinking but you got you know that, so that oh, i gotta I, say that i, I just want to make sure that parents like you know really bring in that self-forgiveness because this system was literally created to like I was just um, on a medicine journey recently and I was just watching these beings like they're hungry for the next generations of human like they're because they're farming right like they, they're farming louche and a lot of people think oh louche happens in ritual abuse but really when when you think about it the masses like nobody's living in their exuberant joy right it's almost like anxiety and depression and fear these are like the normal what's considered normal and when those energies are perpetuated what's happening is that there's actually a, a subconscious consistent louche that's being hijacked so really it's like this massive farm for those energies especially as this assault that's been happening on humanity over the last couple of years through the you know what um, it's really just you know amplifying that louche factory and so the hospitals and the medical system were really created in support of that, to perpetuate that, right? To perpetuate suffering. And they're trying to get children to be born into those spaces. And lucky for us, you know, it's not like it's, it works. I mean, obviously you kids are born in the hospital, but they're connected to source. Like there's nothing that can take that away. And, you know, when we really begin to take, um, become aware of how these games are being played, we can, you know, take back the power of creating, you know, into higher realities by, creating new experiences for birth and all of those things. Totally. A lot of self edu I'm sorry, Abby. Oh, no, no, uh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say too, a lot of us, like myself, we didn't, I didn't have the lineage or generations of like even breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. I did all self-taught, like I, even my mom didn't do that. Like I, all this stuff though, I felt like I need to do, that. I want to do this. Like it was just like, 
I had to find it myself. So I feel like then the next generations, like my daughter, I'm like, I got you, boo. <laughs> Be like the ultimate uh, portal. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of self taught. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, um, <clears throat> as we became, you know, more, as we become more aware and I became more aware, I have, I've, I've asked for forgiveness from my children for certain aspects. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I said, I, I thought I was doing what was best for you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so we've had very open and honest conversations <laughs> about that. And, you know, oh, they so always, beautiful. they always offer, you know, their, their forgiveness, you know, mm -hmm. towards me. And they said, mom, you were doing the best that you mm -hmm. knew of what you knew. And, um, so it, I agree it's, it's being easy on our, on ourselves, but it is definitely, I'm very looking forward. I will be a strong advocate for my girls for their fourth trimester womb healing after so, because that's a huge conversation in itself of trauma that needs to be worked on, um, and healed. It's so beautiful. You know. No, that's say you know the sacral the sacral womb, <laughs> sacred womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to jump a little bit. What are some of the curriculums? <laughs> I know that you've been working on that, and you've been working with it for the adults, but <laughs> you're saying that the, that the kids are trying to hijack your business too. <laughs> Yeah, so they're kind of like, all right, look, here's what we want you to do. I know that you're doing sessions and you're teaching all these, you know, whatever. Like, we just want you to just completely pivot your business. And I was like, I don't think you guys understand how that all works down here. But like, <laughs> they've definitely been like steadily steering my ship. And I've not even noticed until like now where I'm like almost done my project. And they're like, I'm like, oh, this actually leads right into what they want me to do. So what I realized was that there's kind of a, a void in the education system for our starseed um, lightworker community in that there's kind of a lot of different perspectives and different things and all from like various levels of perception. And so for the adult section of the school, it's basically divided into beginner, intermediate and advanced. And the reason why I did this was that like the most natural things that come through my vessel is actually entirely about interdimensional architecture and DNA activation, right? Because I'm a geneticist. And when I talk about DNA activation, I'm talking about those dormant acidic powers where we're able to bend time and open up portals through time space and all of those things that, you know, in the next 10 to 20 years, we're really going to start to be experiencing. And I'm sure as I'm saying that people are kind of, they're like, I don't know, like I felt, the t I feel the tangles, but it sounds crazy, right? <laughs> but I, I realize that for the most part, those things are pretty far-fetched and difficult to comprehend. And so we decided to start with the basics in the beginner's class, where we're really talking about soul fragmentation and the soul's journey from the other side into this body, which is called the science of incarnation, which for the most part, because our passage into our bodies were not protected, we have, you know, frayed soul parts that didn't make it into our body, or maybe the planet was just not in a high enough vibration for all of our soul to make it into the body. And then that's when people start experiencing these higher self walk-in experiences and all of those things. And so we're really talking about, you know, a simple but deep explanation of the chakras of doing shadow work and emotional healing and soul fragmentation is kind of a mission briefing about how the negative aliens have affected the interdimensional structure of our experience and of our consciousness and how this is actually really important because it's just a lot of things that are hard to notice that we've accepted as normal like for example you know you might just be grumpy one day and you think oh i'm getting psych attacked you know it's like oh i'm just grumpy and I, it's maybe it's just normal because everybody gets grumpy sometimes but oftentimes what that is is actually distortions in the light body and distortions in the field that's allowing things to come in and this is really important for parents right because i know i have worked with a lot of starseed children and their parents where they're getting psychically attacked and making the parents be kind of like feel like they're fighting or they're um, in conflict with each other when really they're just being pitted against each other through their wounding. Right. And so it's like if if the adults can understand and really get the tools to be able to sense their light body, which everybody can do, then they can just be like, oh, this frequency is radiating my whatever part of my body where the distortion is, and I can just pull in this frequency of source 
through there and heal it. And then all of a sudden those psychic attacks can't get to us and those can't get to our children because I know that in my family, you know, there were all sorts of wormholes that were trying to get me to kill myself when I was in my teens. I was getting crazy dreams. I was getting abducted. My mom's getting, you know, possessed to like yell crazy things at me. And it's intense. We're in a war, right? It's like <laughs> the dark side is not really, they're not like, oh, look, a, a beautiful baby. I guess I'll take it easy on this baby. Like, no, they're like waiting for these babies to come in. They're starting to creep in. I mean, being pregnant right now, I can feel things kind of trying to get into my field, right? And so oftentimes, you know, for us, we're just like, oh, I'm a little depressed today, or I'm a little bit anxious today. But underneath that, there's just things going on. And we need to understand how we can perceive and address those things. And so then, you know, through that, though, we can then access the higher level teachings of light body mastery and bioregenesis and all of those things um, that I think is what everybody wants to learn. You know, everybody's like, oh, I want to know how to talk to aliens and I want to know how to open portals. I was like, well, you can't until you do this basic level stuff. So we make it fun. And then I think that um, in the intermediate class, there is a class that the Avatar Babies and I are working on together. If you are feeling called to start from conception, like if you're feeling like you're meant to conceive a child and you're meant to call in one of these Avatar Babies, this class goes through, you know, preparation and Stargate consciousness and connecting to Avatar consciousness and preparing the light body and, and telepathically communicating to your children and all of those things. And also in, they told me that, you know, if you're super aware, after the baby is born for the next two years, if you are aware of the medicine space and you can keep the portal open, this will actually fully support the soul into entering the body. And this is something that we used to do as a tribe, actually. You know, that's why in some African tribes, the whole tribe would sing the soul song, right? Yep. It's like something that's helping the baby transition from the other world into this one. And there are things that you can do to set up your space and your house and your time so that you can actually support your baby's transition into this world shamanically so that they don't forget who they are. And so, of course, these are the things that, you know, Kara, she's like a diva. She's like, here's what I want. Here's what I need from you. Here's what you need to be eating. Here's what you need to do for my birth. And then after I'm born, I need this, this, and this, and this so that I don't, you know, <laughs> and I was like, I'm here for it. Like, I, I'm here to serve you, like, whatever it is that you need, you know? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, so, so what you were talking about with, with this, the song and, and bringing in the energy it reminded of a, um, a ceremony in the Lyran uh, section. It actually, I was like remote viewed, taken there um, at the Lions portal back in 2018. I'm sorry, 2019. And um, they were all on their knees, all in a line. And they were singing this frequency song mm. and just, and putting it out into the, like they're all there, like looking out into the sky and I could visually like see this song being put out there. And so it was, it was honoring those who had made the transition moving on, but also calling back the mm. souls back in on their journey. So they were uh, honoring their journey, their transition outwards but also calling them back in. And that just reminded me so much of what you were talking about. And it is just calling in smoothly through love, the right frequency and hoping that they choose mm -hmm. to come and cycle back to them. Yeah. It was really cool. It was, it was, beautiful. It was beautiful. It was beautiful to, to witness and to hear um, the singing, but yeah, so that does, it, it happens in a lot of other systems mm -hmm. in this way. Yeah, that's incredible. That's it, that's, and the, the the curriculum aspect is so important because it is. I feel we have so many, especially in our audience, that they 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 want this information, but mm -hmm. in uh, an understandable way because it's very easy. I feel to kind of get overwhelmed. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of it, and and mm -hmm. knowing what is the right proper. I don't want to say the word order, but you know, like process. The, the process, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, mm -hmm. the right process so that things don't come in too fast or too hard. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yes. Yeah. So, so thank you for, for taking that leap, you know, it, and it is, as part of us. We do, I know it's just inside of us. Like, well, if you don't see it around you, fine, I guess I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, it. I feel like this is like a, a, 
I think that this is just like the greatest honor. I definitely feel like I've been training for this for a long time, not just, you know, even in this life, it's been like eight years that I've been de devotedly training because eight years ago when I woke up, they were like, you're going to be creating a light worker starseed school, the starseed magic school. And so I know that upstairs, you know, I am, you know, what they would refer to as a ship commander or whatever is like my, my role, like you guys nominated me to condense this information and to relay it to support the starseed mission. And while at the same time, of course, having this um, deep experience that I personally have, and it's like, and Abby, I'm sure you know, this is like, when you're actually in alignment, the amount of things that happen when you're not on camera is like, what is, you know, the, the real stuff. And so I've spent the last eight years practicing and, and doing my practices like three to five hours a day. You know, there's not a day where I wake up and the galactics aren't there to be like, all right, today we have to move through this layer and learn about this thing. And that's the only way that I really access all of this information in a grounded way. And what I'm seeing is just that, you know, not everybody is, destined to be an ascension teacher you know how many lifetimes do you have to have mastered different information and practices to be a loving teacher that won't abuse that power mm -hmm. right and what i'm seeing in the spiritual community which is why i've really kind of taken a step back is that there are people that are saying they're ascension teachers but they're they're not and they have no idea what they're talking about and some of them are even put there to, you know, use these words to attract starseeds, to distract them and to take them down, you know, a distraction route where they're hijacked and they're not actually on a good path. And so I guess um, what I'm working through, because I won't be launching this goal until February, is that because I understand what a great responsibility it is that, you know, somebody entrusts you with knowledge about their soul and about their light body. I mean, my guys, when I'm doing sessions before every session, they remind me, you know, think about what you're doing right now. You're just, you're literally interfacing with somebody else's soul, with somebody else's light body. Like that's the most intimate and profound thing that somebody could be trusting you with. And there's a level of precision and honor and gratitude and respect that goes into that space. And so um, I feel like I'm definitely working through, you know, insecurities or just feeling um, even just owning that and stepping forward as somebody that, people can trust as a source of information because mm -hmm. um, you know there's a lot going on out there and I just say that you know I know that you guys need support just on your ascension journey right a lot of people have questions and they want to know what's going on with them and when you're out there looking for a teacher like really look into what their human lives has been like what their history is have they been training right what's their credentials just because they didn't go to university for light body mastery doesn't mean they don't have a resume right check into you know you know what they have gained and what they have experience with and you know if they're actually got phd in mastery or if they seem to not be embodying it in their physical life <laughs> yep. that's super important <laughs> walk in the walk and talk in the talk <laughs> yeah it is it, it is about um how you live your life <laughs> 100%. Yeah, it's tricky when money is involved, right? I mean, it's like, where is the money going? Like, I know that for me, I my role here is also to generate a lot of abundance. I know that the school is going to bring a lot of abundance and it's going to go right back into supporting these star seeds in the next level of our mission, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes you see like, you know, it just kind of goes into a black hole and you're like, where's my money going? I don't know. <laughs> Am I ascending? I don't know. So <laughs> <laughs> What's going on there? We don't, we don't, we don't know. Some more. I need to ascend some more. Here's another <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, such good information. Um, you know, we wish you all the amount of, of luck as you continue to, to walk in your mission. Um, uh, thank you for taking it, taking it head on into working with the curriculum and, and allowing them to, to channel through you and with you to bring it down here in a way that is understandable while we're kind of melding through the muck. <laughs> Such a joy. They have so much fun. They're like, don't you remember? Creation is fun. And they're like, sparkles. <laughs> we're like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's the way it is now. <laughs> Yes, I know. Yes, sweet. Sometimes I get, might get a little more frustrated. Like, you need to remember who you are. Like, come yeah. on, you know this. 
<laughs> yeah. Sometimes they have to yell, right? They're like yelling through a veil and they're like, hello. We're like, oh yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> Got amnesia. <laughs> I told my husband once, I'm like, you have no idea how the feeling of hearing a multidimensional just sigh in defeat because you're not getting it. <laughs> how many more hundreds of ways can I say this? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but we never give up. <laughs> well, thank you. So how can all of our listeners find you, Z? What's the best way um, to get in contact with you? I think that um, if you want, uh, actually the best way to find me is on YouTube, youtube.com slash earthstarhealer. I do like a weekly mission support um, live stream on there and there's lots of information, just a ton. There's so many videos on there. Um, I'm showing up on Instagram these days at earthstar.sanctuary. And then if you just want to be on the wait list for when the school is launching, um, it's going to be $89 a month. Think of it like a yoga studio subscription because it's really a Starseed mission support platform. So we're also going to be doing live streams on top of the very wide selection of courses, um, you know, like weekly DNA activations and healings and seal removals and all of those kinds of things. And so if you just want to stay in tune with that, um, at www.earthstar.academy. <laughs> love it. Thank you so much. And we'll definitely um, love to have you back on the show once everything gets rolling. And, and Of course. Warm. I'm so excited that you guys are doing this. I know that so many parents are, you know, really grateful and are looking for this platform that you guys have created. And there's, I mean, the avatars know who are the perfect candidates for the jobs that they want done. So they definitely found the right ladies to, you know, bring this stuff. To <laughs> Thank you for sharing your beautiful news with us too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, congratulations. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. She's, she's kicking my ass. I love it. So Wake up every day. She's kicking my ass. I'm like, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep kicking my ass. <laughs> you know, so otherwise I'm lost. Our, our, our kids motivate us. I don't have to say they, they push us. They motivate us to, yes. To, yes. to be better and grow. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a really great word. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I look forward to speaking with you again. Yes. All the best. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Bye.